Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is a brand new film from Paramount Pictures. The film is co-written and co-produced by one of its own voice talents, Seth Rogen, as well as his partner, Evan Goldberg. The film is directed by Jeff Rowe, who's coming off directing Oscar-nominated film from a year or two ago from Netflix, The Mitchells vs. The Machines. This one, of course, is about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Donatello, Michelangelo, Leonardo, and Raphael finally being voiced by actual teenagers in its over 30-year franchise. Uh, Nicholas Cantu voices Leonardo, Brady Noon voices Raphael, Sh- Shaman Brown Jr. voices Michelangelo, and Micah Abbey voices Donatello. The turtles in this movie, of course, are very much in their teenage angst, a part of trying to fight crime. They've never fought crime before. They're figuring out their personalities, how they get along with each other, as their father, another mutant rat, vo- uh, Splinter, voiced by Jackie Chan, is allowing them to run errands in the human world, but not to fight or have any contact with any humans. But they do run into a human, April O'Neil, voiced by A.O. Ediberry, who is an up-and-coming high school reporter, as they learn and try to take down the villain Superfly, voiced by Ice Cube, who was turned, uh, basically his own creator was killed by humans, so he's trying to destroy all humans and let mutants run the world. He's a part of an all-mutant team, uh, that is trying to do this. Uh, John Cena voices Rocksteady. Bebop is voiced by Seth Rogen. Leatherhead voiced by Rose Byrne. Um, or, and Paul Rudd as Mondo Gecko. And Ray Filet voiced by Post Malone are among those group. The film is an hour and 39 minutes and is PG. Welcome back to a brand new movie review here on Max Talk Movies today. We're talking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, if you're new to the channel, so please subscribe, ring the bell. I do these movie reviews, TV show reviews, movie rankings, and uh, every Monday my box office breakdown show. So please subscribe, ring the bell. If you're new to the channel, comment down below. Are you a big fan of this franchise? What is your ranking of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, franchise ranking? Is this, is this your first time seeing them? If it is, what are your thoughts on it? If you've not seen it, tell me. Are you just not interested in giving this franchise another shot? Comment down below. What are your, th- uh, and as I said, and like the video, guys, the thumbs up button. That's how you support the film. I, again, well, I wasn't a 90s kid. I was an early 2000s kid. So I really did grow up with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, especially the first movie that I saw. Uh, remember, this franchise was 2007 animated film. Then seeing the two live action films in 2014, 2016. Um, it's something that they've never cracked the code on, but I've loved the world and I love the characters. And when I heard Seth Rogen was writing, producing, that got me really excited. Seth Rogen is a very accomplished producer and writer, not just obviously of his very famous um, live action things, um, but obviously producing both Amazon Prime superhero shows in The Boys, but also more importantly for me, at least for animation, Invincible on Amazon Prime, he also produces... um, and has a voice role in obviously uh, Sausage Party as well. Um, so he really knows how to do animation. Of course, he knows how to write teenagers as well as, as super bad and a multitude of things. So this did feel like a right match of Seth Rogen kind of leading the charge for this movie. And he really has been kind of the spokesperson for this movie. So I was very excited. Uh, and let's get into my thoughts on this film, the positives, the negatives, and then my score. So with the pauses, uh, this is a genuinely surprising really great movie and um this for me at least since i've been alive is easily the best film of this entire franchise and i still think overall this is the best film of the entire franchise i think they really put the teenage in the teenage mutant ninja turtles when you watch a lot of these movies they're voiced by adults um and instead of playing like they're teenagers they're all kind of played as jokesters which is not really what teenagers all four of them are that's really just mikey's role in the group um i think the biggest step one of this movie is casting voice actors who are teenagers and what seth rogan did which he's which uh, seth rogan was his idea and he's talked about this after being in so many other animated films is that he led up to seven of the voice actors in this movie be in recording at one so they can do some imp- improvisation and have some genuine chemistry with one another and movies like this one character at a time gets to voice their role and not even hear or even meet the other people who they're talking to in the movie. And you can genuinely feel that all four of these actors who voiced the Turtles were in the same room, have great chemistry in and outside of the recording booth, and it just spews out in the finished product. Um, And as I said, another step of that is finally casting teenagers in these roles. Um, 
The turtles finally have a sense of innocence to them, which I think they've always have had, but the producers who make these movies for the last 30 years have been missing. Uh, there's a sense of innocence. They're all very flawed characters and trying to, and the, the main theme of the movie is acceptance and being accepted. They love the human world and love watching the humans from afar, but they know that if they show their faces, they won't be accepted. And I think there's a really great theme for every single main character in this movie about acceptance. And I think they didn't just use that for the turtles. They did that for April O'Neil and they did that with the villains as well in the film, which I thought was very, very smart. Um, as I said, the turtles themselves have a lot of great chemistry. Uh, Leo is definitely not the greatest leader, but he still is the right leader for the Ninja Turtles. Um, Mikey's trying to hold in his uh, angst. Uh, Raphael's trying to hold in his uh, aggression. And Donnie's trying to figure out his smartness that he always has had. And another great part of the movie is their dynamic with their father of Splinter, voiced by Jackie Chan, who is phenomenal in the movie. And Splinter also learns a lot just as much as the turtles you know, learn in this movie. There's a reason why he does not want the turtles to be in the human world and above the sewers. And I think they make the movie very personal, both for a human side of the story and a obviously mutant animal side of the story. I really, I really enjoy the father and son's dynamic of the movie. Splinter really loves his kids and wanted to protect them. At, or wants to protect them at all costs. I also think this is by far the best version as well of April O'Neil, uh, voiced by the very great Ayo Edaberry, who I love from The Bear. Um, she's phenomenal in the movie, and the character itself is also very good, making her also in high school. Um, and she has a lot of things on why she's not an in on camera reporter and wants to be a written type of reporter. Um, she also has a character arc about acceptance, which I think is really impactful in the movie and one of the more relatable parts of the movie as well. Also the villain, or I guess the, the, the ultimate villain, Superfly voiced by Ice Cube is also a very interesting villain. Easy to follow backstory that gives me a personal reason for basically wanting to get rid of humanity as the dominant species on earth. And um, Ice Cube, of course, is a very hilarious voice actor. Um, but his also this team of other mutants is also tons of fun. Um, obviously, John Cena and Seth Rogen were definitely standouts as Rock, Bebop and Roxanne, but nothing touches for me in this movie than uh, Mondo Gecko, voiced by Paul Rudd. Scene stealing character. I could watch a movie alone with uh, with Mondo Gecko and Michelangelo. That is a movie I would love to watch. Paul Rudd's very funny, but the character itself is also just hilarious as i said this movie has a lot of heart to it has a lot of teenage angst which i think fits this movie a lot the turtles are very fresh into the fighting um it's just a heart though this movie has a lot more heart and emotion that i think anyone would would expect in a tmnt movie but in this ninja turtle movie there's a lot of heart messaging and themes which i think really pulls you in um other thing I had to talk about, which is of one of the best parts of the movie, is the animation. Um, as I said, Jeff Rowe came from just directing uh, The Mitchells vs. Machines, which is my favorite Netflix animated film that they've done, one of my favorite animated films of the last 10 years. And you can tell that this movie is heavily inspired by Mitchells vs. Machines, of course, but also heavily inspired by the revolutionary Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movies. And this animation is so daring was so beautiful and gorgeous and also helped bring out a lot of the emotion in the movie. Um, it's one of the most gorgeous films that you'll see all year long. And it's just a great time for animation, really outside of Disney at the moment. A lot of these studios, Paramount, Universal, um, Sony, are really taking huge chances at creative animation. And for a lot of the time, it really comes through. And animation is not just a film that you can just throw together and make for family and friends. These films are gutsy animated films, and I really do res respect and I'm loving the animation time that we've been in in the last 12 to four to 24 months. Um, let's get into some, also I want to say also a phenomenal score, shockingly, from Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. I'm really not shockingly from Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. They're obviously one of the top composers of all time, um, and they usually don't do animation. They did um soul and they won the oscar for scoring soul back in, in 2020 but other than that that's their only animated film at least of credit that i can see 
they did a phenomenal job with the score as well. Let's get into the negatives of the movie. I don't really have a lot of negatives. Sometimes with the whole mutant big cast that they have, some of them all don't pop. Uh, Roxanne and Bebop in particular, I think are funny at points, but kind of forgettable. Um, other than Paul Rudd, a lot of that team are kind of one note, kind of forgettable characters. Again, loved hearing Rose Byrne's voice as one of these characters. Um, but at sometimes th there's a bit too many mutants in this movie. I know it's me and mayhem, but some, not all of them are kind of one note, kind of forgettable um, characters to the film. Um, and I mean, other than that, I mean, this, uh, another, I mean, I guess another element to the movie is I do like the opening scene, which involves Giancarlo Esposito's character. Um, but I would have liked a little more backstory on who that character is before we got that opening scene. But overall, guys, this is a phenomenal film for me. I, I love this movie. I can't wait to rewatch this multiple times. So happy they already announced a sequel to this movie. I do want to let you know, there's also a mid credit scene, not an end credit scene, but a mid credit scene that you guys will want to stay in for. So uh, overall, a great film. My favorite film of this entire franchise. I think Seth Rogen and his team have put together uh, finally a rejuvenation to a franchise that has kind of felt dead due to the people who've been making these movies for so long. They finally found the right people behind the screen to make this movie. And the voice cast is so phenomenal. I cannot wait to be in this world more often. Uh, I'm going to give TMNT, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, a 4.5 out of 5. I'm going to go 88%. I, I love this movie. It's a phenomenal film. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys soon.